Hello, 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 everyone. This is Jay Lee's Corner. I am, of course, Jay Lee, and this is something new that I've decided to start doing. Um, I am very much so into celebrity news, celebrity gossip. I'm always reading up on stuff, and a lot of my friends are always like asking me, like, "Oh, what's going on with so and so?" Because they know typically Jay Lee is aware of whatever's going on in entertainment and, and and just you know gossip news or whatnot. So I say every week or so, um, at least once a week, if not twice a week, I was going to do like just a recap of some of the, you know, talked about stories of the week within entertainment. And today is the first segment. I have not thought of what I want to call this segment. I thought about, you know, tea in the corner with Jay Lee, but I'm not sure about that yet. So, hopefully you guys will enjoy and share the video because that's what I love. I also love new subscribers. So, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. It just lets you know when I have a new video up and keeps you aware of my content. So, let's get started for this new celebrity gossip segment. So, Carucci and Chris Brown. Everyone knows they have broken up. It's been very volatile between them two. But Karuchi was trying to get every train in order. Yes, I have notes. Um, Karuchi was trying to get every train in order against Chris Brown. She was given a temporary one um, earlier this year. But today in court, well, yesterday because it's after midnight. Um, but on the 15th of June, she was granted a permanent restraining order against Chris Brown. And this restraining order is supposed to be in effect for five years. Now, Chris Brown was not at the hearing that they had today, but Carucci was there. Um, reports are saying that they did play two voicemails from Chris Brown. And in the voicemails, what was Chris doing? Chris was being Chris. He was yelling and cussing and fussing and cussing her ass out, telling her, you know, bitch this and bitch that. And just this the normal things a pissed off ex-boyfriend does when he call you. He call you all out your name. He, you know, get belligerent or whatever. So, you know, they did play those voicemails from him. He was going off about some rings that he gave her that I assume, you know, that she has not given back to him. And it was just him saying that he wanted these two rings back. They also showed some text messages, allegedly. Because you know you can fake text messages from a, if you just change the number of your phone. So we can't say if those were really from Chris or if they were not from Chris. The voicemail just because, you know, it's his voice. But the um, alleged text messages from Chris was him he, saying that he was going to beat the shit out of her. Chris, you can't be that fucking stupid. You can't threaten people via text message. You should not also threaten people via voicemail. Because guess what it can be? You use this fucking evidence. Duh. So, you know, I don't know if the text was from Chris Brown. But I don't think that you should text people that you're going to beat the shit out of them. That's just plain fucking stupid and if you did that you're a fucking idiot um now if if i don't know what again allegedly because i don't know if from texas from that man i don't know where that lady and i don't know how truthful she can be um so she he also said something as to the effect of if she did not return the rings that he was going to <laughs> he would hurt her limbs now, what kind of pussy-ass threat is that? I'm going to hurt your limbs. You know, I'm going to at least say, I'm going to break your jaw. I'm going to break your legs. I'm going to hurt your limbs. That, to me, I was like, who the fuck talks like that? But, again, this is what they had in court today. And this is the reason why Karuchi was granted this five-year um, restraining order against Chris Brown. Now, she did tell the judge about these rings that he keep harassing her about. She said that... She told him that she had sold the rings and when in fact she had not sold them, she still has them. I guess they were supposed to, she was supposed to give the rings to a mutual friend who would give them back to Chris and she had not done that yet. So for me, I'm like, that's her pushing his fucking buttons because if you're saying he keeps harassing you, he keeps calling you, he keeps doing whatever about these rings... Why won't you give the rings back unless you're looking for that kind of attention? If you want someone to leave you alone and you have something they want, give them whatever it is the fuck they're asking for. Why would you keep the rings? Because keeping the rings is the reason he keeps calling and harassing and threatening to hurt your limbs. You know, if you want to keep your limbs, 
I suggest you you should have given him the rings. So for me, the fact that she basically admitting she basically admitted in court that she lied to Chris. I mean, he's pissed off because well, now he probably was pissed off because you sold some shit he gave you when he wanted them back. So not saying him threatening to beat her up and hurt her limbs and call her her name was right. But when you break up with someone and you do stupid stuff to make them angry, you can't then play victim. If he wants the rings back, give him the fucking rings back and keep keep going on with your life. So we shall see how that plays out. They didn't say the judge was going to um, make her. Well, the judge should make her give him them damn rings. But anywho, next story. <sighs> Nene Leakes is coming back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I am a, you know, Housewives fan. I review videos. Um, I do review videos of the season. Um, I'm not happy or sad that Nene's coming back. I was a Nene fan when, you know, the first couple of seasons. I liked Nene. She was relatable. She was funny. She was approachable. Somewhere along the lines, Nene got too big for her goddamn britches and she got Hollywood and she started to think she was better than other people and that's when I stopped fucking with Nene um the last few seasons that she was on she just act like she was better than and I think it was because at that particular time that's when Hollywood was checking for her she was on a celebrity apprentice she had that own sh the other show where she was you know, basically herself, she was like the nanny or an assistant of two gay people. I can't remember. Um, but that show was canceled. And she hasn't been on many shows since. I know she was doing some touring for like a one-woman show, which is good. I'm not saying that she didn't, you know, she couldn't make money elsewhere. But I wasn't fucking with Nene personally. So, she did announce today that she's coming back. They finally reached a decision or they reached an amount of money that she wants to be paid. And she posted on Instagram like she had like a whole photo shoot. She had a crown on. She had some champagne with the peach and the champagne. Oh, the threat is back. The show did fine without you as a main cast member for at least three three seasons. Season 8, you were on the little bit. Season, no. Yeah, season 8, she wasn't on there much. She wasn't on there at all for season 9. And even the seasons before that, she didn't do much. So it's not as if the show was hurting without you. So, you know, I just hope with her coming back to the show, she's not that arrogant bitch who I didn't like. I hope she's the Nene that I love, who was funny, snappy, sassy, you know, a little bit petty. And I love petty. I'm petty too. But you can't be like, I'm too good for this show, but I'm on the show. Because if you too good for the other ladies on the show, then why are you on the show? Why haven't you got your own spinoff? Why haven't you had your own show, boo-boo? Because you need the other ladies. Because in all honesty, I would not watch a Nene reality show. I don't watch the damn Kim Zosiac show. The only one that I did watch was when, it, when Candy had her little spinoff when her family went to the ski resort. I did because I think Candy is interesting because Candy has other supporting family members who can be um, a part of the show. Nene, you, I can't take all that Nene-ness for a I can't, you know. And there's rumors that supposedly Kim Zosiac may be back. Now her, I ain't checking for at all. I don't think she needs to come back. I know she's only coming back for the simple fact that her and Nene are kind of cool. I believe um, Kim's cool with Sheree. I don't need the original ladies to be back in order for the show to be back to what it used to be. I mean, I don't. I think the show does need to freshen up a little bit, but I'm thinking that with them getting rid of Phaedra, Hopefully they bring in some new blood. I hear that Shamia, um, who was Candy, and also Portia's friend has been shooting some scenes. So I'm just hoping the next season won't be full on. Nene's back. Kim's back. And that's the whole point of the, uh, of the new season. No, I need it to be something a little bit more than that. Next on the list, speaking of Real Housewives, Kenya Moore got married. Now, all tea, all shade. I don't believe it. I think this is some kind of 
rules. I don't, I, I need to see a marriage license. I need to see wedding video just to make sure it's true because people all the time say they're married. Hell, Steve and Johnson faked the marriage for five, six seasons of their show. Brandy said she was married to her daughter's father and they wasn't married. I just don't think that Kenya out the blue secretly got married when the whole point of her storyline on the Housewives of Atlanta for so many years has been her trying to find a man and her trying to be happy. I just don't understand that at all. But lo and behold, she got married over the weekend. She supposedly married a businessman that she met last year. They have been dating for a few months. He is also the same age, in the same age range as her. And they're mid to late 40s. They were married in St. Lucia over the weekend with just family and friends. Close family and friends to be exact. But again, I call bullshit. Kenya is a spotlight, attention-seeking person. And all praise to her for wanting that type of attention. So for me, I just don't think that she would find a man and then secretly get married. And the part that makes me think is less believable is because it's being rumored that, not even rumored, that she's, well, yeah, rumored. Because, you know, everything is allegedly um, when people say things, except she is married. Um, but how she's saying that she wants to keep this relationship off of the Real Housewives. She wants to keep it private because supposedly him and his family, they aren't really, like, into the spotlight. How the fuck do you marry Kenya Moore, who's a, a star castmate on a reality show called Real Housewives? How do you date and marry her but then don't want to be involved in the show? If you're not a housewife or you ain't trying to be a housewife, if Kenya on that show now show that man... I call file. Her ass should be fired. Because my thing is, you're supposed to be on the show to share your life. How can you get married and then never show your husband? If anyone who was married and they never show their husband ain't fucking married. I tell you that much. But, you know, congratulations, Kenya, on this marriage. Let's hope it's real. Let's hope you ain't bought no African from somewhere and made him marry you for a green card. Let's just hope and pray. Jesus be a witness to this union. You know, bless it all. You know, I, I do wish God bless her. I just don't believe she really got married. I just don't believe I, I think if she got married, she would have she would have just talked about it. Unless she's saving it for some kind of special. But she ain't keeping it a secret. She not Beyonce. No, she ain't. Okay, next up, Escape. As y'all know, they are gearing up for a reunion. They are doing a couple of tour dates. They are also going to be playing at Essence Fest. What they also will be doing is getting a new reality show. Yes, the four ladies of Escape will have a reality show. It will be on Bravo. It's going to be following their road back to grouphood. Um, the shows that they'll be doing all leading up to the big show at Essence Fest. And actually, Mona Sky Young, love and hip hop producer, creator, um, she is the executive producer of their reality show on Bravo. I'm here for it. I am an Escape fan. You know, I am a 90s baby. I was born in 82. I'm 35 years old. So I remember Escape. We used to sing Escape in school. You know, that, that was a talent show song. You know, I have all their albums. So, I'm very, very, very excited that they have um, come back together. I'm happy that they aren't coming back together to do new music. I like they're coming back together to recap their old music. Even if they have one or two new songs, I don't really need them to come back together and try to do a whole new album. Mm-mm, boo-boo. No, ma'am. Come back and do them good old hits that we like. You know what I'm saying? That's what we want to see. You know, you're my little secret. You know, um, just kicking it. That's what I, you know, kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the motherfucking Escape beat. Yes, ma'am. That's what I want to hear. So, I'm very much so here for the reality show. Um, for the reunion, for tours, I'm down for all of that. And supposedly the reality show will air sometime in November because that's around the same time that um, the Real Housewives of Atlanta will be on. So I'm guessing they're going to try to tie, you know, with Candy being on Real Housewives of Atlanta, tie that into the Escape reality show. It's actually pretty smart. Um, next up in my celebrity gossip, 
Venus and Serena Williams' father has filed for divorce from his 38-year-old wife. Venus and Serena's dad is 78. The him and the girl has been married for seven years, which means when they got married, she was 31, he was 68. Daddy, um, yeah, hey, daddy, is I'm sure what the girl said when she saw it. The daddy, um, they have a five year old son together, and the dad is accusing the wife of <laughs> stealing his social security check. Um, also, that she forged his name on some deeds to transfer um, a home and a car into her name and also for stealing some guns and some other little things um the wife is saying that he's just trying to do that to prevent i mean to stop paying um child support i don't think any of that <laughs> would make the courts not have him pay child support if you have custody of this five-year-old child and why you take that man's social security check i just can't you know that's why you can't marry Every young broad you meet. And young broads, you can't, you know what I'm saying, tie down every old man sugar daddy that you meet. Because if you owe tie down an old sugar daddy and he catch your ass taking his check, he gonna divorce you. And lo and behold, you are, it's gonna make the news because it's Venus and Serena Williams' daddy. I don't even know how you steal somebody's social security check. Do people still get checks? Like, they don't have social security direct deposit? I mean, was she, like, did she take the check? And then, like, put it in her own account. Or did she take the check and then she go to the check cashing place down on Mac and Bewick. That's what we is here in Michigan. Um, and cash that man's check. I just don't understand why he getting a check, why he ain't getting direct deposit. So, <laughs> who knows? This is, of course, going to play out in the courts. And I hope she ain't take that man's check. You can't even trust these hoes these days. Um, this story is the whole reason why I said I was going to start doing celebrity stuff. Now, I don't watch The Bachelor. I don't watch The Bachelorette. I haven't really watched a dating reality show since, like, Flavor of Love, you know, and I Love New York and those kind of shows back in the day. Um, but this little Bachelor in Paradise situation, so I have a whole little printout thing because this is a lot to remember. Now, this is all like part TMZ. Um, Demario and Corinne, who I guess were was a contestant on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. And now, The Bachelor in Paradise, Paradise has been halted. They have stopped all kind of production because of this mishap, this little misrepresentation, this little misconduct. This, they don't know what happened. This, somebody got that coochie eight, name on the eight. Um... <sighs> Filming has been suspended for now, maybe even forever, because supposedly producers felt that it was some sexual misconduct on film. Now, as far as I've read up on Bachelor in Paradise, it's people from the Bachelor and the Bachelorette, they take them to an island, they party, have fun, and basically hook up. So, supposedly on day one, two-ish, both parties... Demario and Corinne were throwing back shots, throwing back drinks, getting faded, tore up. Well, they got so drunk that neither of them can... Well, see, this is not my thing. The allegations is that the producers felt like the female was too drunk to give consent for the male to have done what he did to her. Now, first of all, all he did to her was at her cootie cat. Um, the reports, or at least his side of it, he was saying that he and Corinne had been drinking very heavily, making out at the bar. She suggested that they take it to the swimming pool. Yes, I'm reading notes. And then where they got to the pool, took off their clothes. Now, if she took off her own clothes, that was consent. She had enough sense to take her damn clothes off. So, they took off their clothes... And they began rubbing, touching, and fingering. Um, who was fingering who? I hope only he was fingering her. Because if she was fingering him, something was in the water. And they both were just going a little bit too far. He also says that she put her cootie cat 
in his face and he began licking. Now, my thing is, you know, if you put your cootie cat in a guy's face and he eats your cootie cat, you gave him consent to eat your cootie cat because you put your cootie cat in that man's face. Now, if you were sitting in the pool and he picked up your cootie cat and he put it on his face, now, that can be considered, you know, misconduct and misrepresentation. It could be, you know, in a, you know, some kind of assault, you know, in some way. But my thing about this is, if two consenting adults are both completely inebriated, who's the victim? You know, in the words of Riley Freeman from Off the Boondocks, oh, yes, the victim. Now, producers or people are trying to make it seem as if the female, Corinne, is just so distraught. She thinks something went wrong. I heard that she's not blaming DeMario. She's really blaming production. Because, again, they were filming this. So, producers, y'all filmed a rape in some sort of way. Y'all filmed this sexual misconduct. No producer thought, hey, not only is she drunk, he's also drunk. He was so drunk, he let a bitch, bitch, I'm sorry, he let a chick put her coochie in his face. Was he sober enough to consent to eating pussy? No, he wasn't. If she wasn't sober enough to consent to getting her pussy ate, then he should be, he was also too drunk to consent to eating it. They're both victims. They both should feel some kind of way. But production never stopped filming. And to the... They keep saying how the producer or the people who have filed suits to say, hey, I think something went wrong, they weren't even there. They haven't seen the footage. They just heard from someone else, oh, they both were really, really drunk. She was really, really drunk. Where's the fucking footage? Why can't... I don't get when stuff happened and there's video of it. Why don't people watch footage? Before you make it an issue, if you've seen the footage and you see that she's just totally shit-faced and he's sober and he understands exactly what's going on and he grabs her cootie cat he ate it, okay, then yes, he's dead-ass wrong. But if they both were drunk and they're both, because he was said that he was so drunk, he couldn't get his dick hard. And that's why they did not have sex and he only put she and that's why he ate her out was because he was too drunk to do anything else and it's i just don't get it you put people on an island with liquor they're going to hook up they are but if you're a production and you see two drunk ass people doing something that doesn't seem like it should be done because they're both too drunk who's the victim I can't wait for them to say what the video shows because if because people who saw the video who were actually on set was saying she she was sober enough to get to give consent she wasn't so drunk that she did not know what was going on she was going along with it and I mean he ate her pussy and y'all recorded it that's the part that's crazy to me y'all recorded the shit <laughs> This is crazy. So, last story of the night. Q Parker um, of the group 112. Love 112 back in the day. And he is one of the lead singers. Um, he is involved in a who your daddy battle, as I'm going to call it. Um, 12 years ago, he cheated on his wife. And when he cheated, he knocked the bitch up. So, because he did not want his wife to know, he knocked someone up. The baby mama threatened to tell his wife. So, what did Q Parker 112 do? He has secretly been paying child support for 11 years for this 11-year-old little boy. And, first of all, how can you secretly pay child support for 12 years? I just think that's crazy. And, you know... <sighs> That's a long time to secretly pay child support for a child. Um, all because you don't want your wife to know you cheated. Eventually, your wife gonna find out about that baby. And it reminds me of Arnold Schwarzenegger. When he cheated with that damn housekeeper. And then, lo and behold, all these years later, his wife found out about a goddamn love child. So, Q and this woman, he had been paying her for 11 years. He was paying her um, 22 hundred dollars a month 
for 11 years and his wife did not know he never had a paternity test because my thing is if you tell me that it's my baby we're going to at least find out if it's my baby before i pay you any amount of money not cute dumbass nope cute dumbass paid this woman for 11 years and never had a dna test to see if that was biologically his child so now that his wife knows about the baby they're working through there they're still married they're still whatever um he's now trying he's now trying to get a damn dna test for this damn 11 year old child he's saying that once the paternity test is done if it is his child he wants to get his payments lowered to 310 dollars a month why do you say he wants a lord to lower 310 dollars a month well because as he says his income is only about 2500 dollars per month because as we know 112 ain't booking as many shows now as they were 12 years ago they were popping 12 years ago not so much now and also because the mother of the child supposedly her monthly income is around eight thousand so i do agree if he makes less than her you know he should not be paying all of that money i do think that child support should be based on the person's income um you can't ask a person to pay more money than they make especially when the mother is making triple what he brings in per month and he ain't making money like that but my thing is who the fuck pays child support for 11 years for a baby that they don't know was theirs now that's just stupid and what if that child is not yours and you didn't pay this lady who knows how much money for these past 11 years all so that your wife would not find out that you cheated I, if i was his wife i would be more pissed off because i'm like what if the baby ain't yours and you didn't pay her all this money over all these years that was money out of our pocket out of our household so you didn't waste all this money just because you fucked up you gotta write me a check homeboy if it ain't your baby i need a check asap and they can't make I don't think they can make the baby mama pay the money back. I don't think they can do that. Now, she can probably sue him for, like, false or misrepresentation of, I don't know, who knows. But, you know, hopefully the baby is. Because if I didn't pay child support for 11 years. And my thing is, if, you was, if it was a secret, I'm guessing you couldn't have not have been an active father in a child's life. So, even now, if the baby is yours... You going to now start being the father? You know, sooner is better than never. I say that. But, man, if you out here fucking these people and she say it's your baby, please get a DNA test. And, ladies, if you out here fucking some guy, this makes sure he ain't somebody else's husband. So, that is all that I have for this first edition of my Gossip to Go. No, I don't like that. I figure out what I'm gonna call it, but still got to spend with Jay Lee. So I'm Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's corner. Until the next gossiping day, peace.